it's Denise. I just wanted to share with you something that I've mentioned, but never really gone into in detail, and that is managing your medications. If you're someone who is on multiple medications, and or if you're someone who is assisting someone who is on multiple medications who needs assistance. I personally find that these weekly organizers, I have two of them. Now, I've just mostly finished filling them um, because you didn't need to watch me pour all of these pills into two weeks worth of supplies. Uh, I figured I would just show you how I kind of finish up. You can see that the I take regular medications um, twice a day. I take them in the morning and I take them at closer to bedtime. So these particular ones have four boxes a day. They would have like morning, afternoon, evening, and bedtime. So as far as the medications that I absolutely on a schedule take, they go on the top and in the bottom. So I'm down to my the last medication, which happens to be one that I take both in the morning and the evening. So I sort of, yes, I know the any nurse is watching, you're cringing that I'm pouring these into my hands. Because as a nurse, you don't do that. You like would pour it into the cap and then pour it from that into a medication cup if it didn't come in some sort of pre-packaged individual thing, which most things in hospitals do now because they're dispensed by a machine. Uh, but I'm just I washed my hands before I did this, and I'm just setting this up for myself. So yeah, don't don't cringe too much that I'm testing them with my hands. I just go along and put one in each morning. And, you know, like the pills that are already in there, I have gone and done the same thing. If it's something I only take in the morning, then I just put it in the morning boxes. If it's something like this that I take morning and evening, I go ahead and put it in the evening boxes as well. There we go. We can go from Thursday onward. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'm going to need another three more. I guess saying another and more was sort of redundant. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so now I can close these up. And for me personally, now here, here's my little disclaimer. Officially, the safest way to take your medication is directly out of the bottle with the pharmacy label on it. And if you are a you know professional or paid caretaker of someone, it may be required, uh, depending on the sort of setting that you're in, it may be required that you give them directly out of the pharmacy bottle that they that they come in. Now, having said that, I'm a grown person who does their own medication at home for themselves. So I use these. And as someone who does have some memory problems, I find it helpful to be able to look at it. Like, for example, I should have done this yesterday. I woke up this morning and did not have my medicine ready to take. Now, I could dig through the bag that I keep all of these in twice a day and have to find the right pills, and that would just be no annoying and time-consuming. And also, it would be easy to forget. Whereas now, it's like, oh, it's Wednesday, and it's almost 10.30 in the morning. What do you know? Wednesday morning's pills are still in here, because I just filled them. Um, but normally, if I thought, hey, I don't, I'm not sure. Did I take my pills this morning? If I looked and they were still in there, I would know that, no, I hadn't taken them yet. Another way I double-check, and this is going to sound silly, excuse me, while I swallow Wednesday morning's pills. Because it's just getting later while I make this video. Um, is sometimes I'll do like, do I have my patch on? Because after I take my pills, um, this is one of those sad things I'm going to tell you. And not sad, like, feel sorry for me sad, but just like, sad for other people who are in, okay, financially my position kind of sucks, but that's not my point. My point is there are people who have it much worse. 
and I'm supposed to use this inhaler every single day. It's a preventative medication for asthma. I've been hospitalized for asthma so many times over the course of my life that I have literally lost count. I can't even tell you accurately how many times I've been hospitalized for asthma. But these are really expensive. And I should be sitting here saying I take this every day. I have had to make the decision to only take it every other day so that a three-month supply lasts me for six months. Um, and that is the sad state of affairs for people like myself who become disabled and are living on a fixed income. You have to decide which medications you can afford to skip. And I don't, I don't like even having to admit that, but at least at the moment, my asthma is under pretty good control between the, the medicines that I'm on. One of the pills that I take at night is also a preventative for asthma. And this inhaler, like I said, is a preventative. I'm supposed to take it every day, only take it every other day. Did not take it today because uh, I take it on even days, and today's the 23rd. So, this, the prescription uh, steroid nose spray that I use for allergic, uh, you know, sinus and nose type allergy symptoms, and melatonin, which I take as a little bit before I actually want to go to sleep. So I may have taken my nighttime medication, say, at 9 o'clock, but I'm still doing something. Maybe I'm watching a movie, or I'm playing a game, or I'm talking to someone. I don't actually take the melatonin until I'm done with those things, and I want to get ready to go to sleep. So these three things live on my nightstand. They don't. And obviously they wouldn't fit in a pillowcase. But, yeah. So those, those three things do not uh, go in there. So the pills I take, these cases I like. They're kind of in rainbow order, which, and they've got the days of the week on the bottom. I can hold one up to show you. Here's Sunday. Um, so my morning pills are in there, and my, my bedtime pills are in the bottom. That leaves me these two center ones to use for things like that are either over-the-counter or prescription things that I use once in a while. Whether it's something that's specifically, you know, just for if I'm having a specific symptom like stomach pain, nausea, a migraine, um, like in, in this compartment. I mean, most people re can recognize Benadryl throughout its very long existence. Pretty much it's always a pink and white capsule. Sometimes it's just a small pink tablet, but they pretty much always stick with the pink color theme. And I do have, you can't really, I don't think it really shows up here. Uh, B-E-N. I have written there in Sharpie. I can see it more clearly in person than it really shows up on the screen. Because you never want to be unsure what it is. And honestly, if you put something in here and you then can't remember what it is, don't take it. Just don't. Don't risk that it's not what you think it is. So unless you can clearly mark what it is, and it's a pretty distinctive medication that you you would pr probably know what it was anyway. I mean, like, the giant uh, Tums chewable antacids. Like, they're the only thing I have that are big and multicolored, big chewables. Um, I have them in here. And, you know... I know what those are. But, so yeah, that lets me put a week's worth of pills, and like I said, for someone forgetful like myself, you know, if if at noon I say, oh, oh wow, I was really busy this morning, did I remember to take my pills? I can look back now, and I'll see that Wednesday morning's section is empty, and I'll know I took them. Now, like I said, I did not use my inhaler today because it I'm only taking it every other day, and it is an even... Uh, it, it's an odd day today. Do need to use my nasal spray? Won't make you make. Won't make you watch that. And I am going to use. And just to show you another, you know, coping mechanism as someone who doesn't have a great memory. 
on my vitamin patches. Now I use the vitamin I use a vitamin patch every day. Um, it it replaces the need for taking multiple different supplements at multiple times a day. Um, now some people even without weight loss surgery need a lot of supplements. I personally was vitamin D3 deficient uh, for a long time prior to ever having weight loss surgery. I was on prescription vitamin D3 and leading up to the months leading up to knowing I was going to have my weight loss surgery I started using these patches because honestly I was skeptical would they give me the same absorption and would my blood work be as good as it was taking the supplements by mouth because after the surgery your stomach is much smaller you have trouble swallowing larger pills and you know multiple pills you pretty much have to go switch over to chewable versions of like your multivitamins and your calcium and things and I am someone whose stomach does not absorb iron well so I can't take iron supplements by mouth that's that's its own whole story that I can get into that I'll spare you right now um, let's just say that it's the reason that I stopped being a vegetarian after almost a decade of being so uh, younger in life and you can see I've written all over this use Brio that would be the inhaler uh, nose spray twice a day um, and of course I use a patch every day which I can show you them because I as you saw I just took my pills after I take everything else now I have to remember to use my nose spray, which I promised you I would not do in front of you. Okay, this is the last one I have on. You see they come like six to a six to a page. And they're, you can't really see them. You, see, you can kind of see them. They're the little squares. They're like white squares on white paper, so it's hard to see them. But there's six of them on each little page. And there's five pages, so you get 30 of them per, per package. Uh, this page is down to just having... Can you see? It's, it, it's the non-shiny matte area over here. The only trick to these, I would say, is once it hits, like if you let it fold up on itself, you're kind of done. Um, I just kind of pick a different spot along my shoulder or upper arm and just sort of rotate a little bit. You press that on there and basically, you know, depending some people say 12 hours, some people say 8 hours is enough. Um, I just pretty much, again, I, I like to keep it simple. I do medications twice a day. Um, I put the patch on when I take my morning medicine, and when I take my bedtime medicine, I take the patch off. Um, it's sort of my reminder to myself. Like, this is another reminder of, did I take my pills today? Yep, there's a patch on. I took my pills today, you know. Um, if, if you are someone who does have some memory issues, which unfortunately I've had since the spinal cord injury, but I also have as a result of some of the medications that I take. Uh, one in particular, which is a preventative for the migraines, does cause some interference with memory. So... It's important to know if you took all your medication or not. And this is also a good way of knowing if someone is having trouble with their memory because sometimes you're the last one to know that you're having trouble with your memory. Um, especially with something personal like taking your medications because no one else has any reason to be checking that. So if at the end of the week, if I looked back and say two or three of these compartments had pills in them, I would know that that meant I forgot to take my medications on those occasions. And that's a problem. So having them in an organizer like this where I can easily check that I took them. Yes, the morning dose for today is gone. Um, you know, and in the evening, I don't tend to forget so much in the evening because it's kind of something I do close to bedtime. Or I try to, or I should say, I try to remember to take the pills right about 9 o'clock. Um... And then, like I said, I'll take the melatonin as I get closer to actually, like, I'm ready to go to sleep. I'll take the melatonin. Um, 
today just so happened to be the day that I had that I took my Amavig, which is an injectable uh, once a month preventative medication for migraines. I do take a tablet twice a day, but I also take an injection once a month. And um, you know, it, it's empty. I used it. It's an, but I just saved it to show it to you. It's an auto injector. If you're familiar with an EpiPen, which they use for allergic emergencies, then uh, you will be familiar with the design of this. Basically, where you see that yellow bar uh, before you use it, that's clear. You're seeing like the clear liquid that is the medication. You would take the safety cap off the end. You pick kind of a you pick a flabby bit. You don't inject this directly into a muscle. So say anywhere you can grab a little pinch in inches, they used to say, um, like I gave it on the left side of my stomach, kind of, you know, you just pinch a little bit, you know, obviously I have a shirt on, you would be holding it against your skin, you sort of push it, you know, you'll feel it give a little bit, um, then you push the button, that, and you want to hold it in position the whole time, you push the button, you, you hear a click, and you obviously feel the needle. It's not as bad as you might think. It really is not that painful. If you're hesitant because of you thinking it's going to hurt that much, trust me, it's it's not bad at all. You hold it. Um, they tell you to count to ten, but believe me, you'll hear. It usually takes a little less than that. I find it takes about five or six seconds. You'll hear another click. That would be the needle. Once it finishes injecting, it pulls back up into it so that there's no needle. As you can see, there's no needle sticking out. It pull it retracts back in. Then you just pull it out, um, just for the safety of anyone further down the you know garbage industry that might encounter this. I always make sure I put the cap back on. Now there's no longer that the fact that you see a yellow bar instead of clear liquid lets you know this is used and there's nothing in it. And I just again for the safety of anyone handling garbage further down the line, I completely repackage it before I put it in the garbage. And it is not reusable, so I'm not worrying about like throwing out syringes that, I mean, not that I live in an area where I really would worry about that. Plus, I take my garbage directly to the dump, so it's not like I'm leaving it at the curb and some desperate drug addict is going to be looking to try to reuse my syringes. Like, that's just not my situation. But in some areas, they do have problems of people going through, like if they know there's someone who's diabetic who might have syringes that they're throwing out, there are specific ways you're supposed to dispose of reusable syringes. This is not reusable. Um, and like I said, I take my garbage directly to the dump and throw it in the giant, you know, compactor thing, so I know nobody's going to be trying to take this apart and use it to inject anything that they shouldn't. Here's a clean package that I didn't write all over, just in case you're interested. And these, you do not have to get a prescription. My doctor recommended them, but you do not need a prescription to purchase them. So if you're someone who's interested, I can let you see the back so that you can, if you want to, like, screenshot it and take the time to compare. It is, it meets all the requirements that were laid out by my surgeon and nutritionist for the requirements for someone who's had weight loss surgery, which is a higher level of supplements than the average person who's able to eat a more varied diet. So, excellent multivitamin. Um, honestly, I have to say, the whole time I've been on it, both before and, and since my surgery, my blood work as far as vitamins, iron, has been great. So these totally work for me. And my doctor and nutritionist said that they've had amazing success with them as far as the vast majority of patients just really find them preferable. And they are about 15 to $20 a pack. My doctor at the office sells them for $15 a pack. If you order them online from PatchMD directly, I think they charge $19. So I usually wait till they're having a sale. And then I will buy, like when they're having like a 30 or 40% off sale, I'll buy three or four months worth then, and it'll end up costing the same as the doctor's office without using the gas to drive to the doctor's office, which is almost four hours away. Um, what else can I tell you? I got these, uh, I got these organizers on, uh, Amazon. 
I like the fact that each individual day comes out and that you can, you know, you have the additional separate case that then closes so you have less chance of them spilling open, like say in your suitcase or something if you're traveling. Some uh, airline, not airlines, cruise lines, <laughs> not that any of us are really cruising right now, at least not in the United States. In fact, just uh, this week I got the official cancellation that my December uh, cruise was canceled. Uh, that was going to be sailing out of Miami. Um, but in the past, I know that, now I ha have I taken these on cruises? Yes, I have. But I also did bring the bag of medications with the, bo with the bottles that have some of the pills in it that shows that, yes, I do have a prescription for all of these things, you know, that are prescription medications. Obviously, you don't need a prescription, you know, for things like Benadryl. But the cruise line does have, you know, they never have, they never asked me about it. I, I suppose, you know, unless you've done something maybe or randomly or drug sniffing dogs or whatever, I don't know. Unless, for some reason, they felt the need to look through. And I always keep my medication in my carry-on bag anyway. But if you had packed it, unless they had some reason to look through your bag... Uh, I don't think they would really have any reason to question it. Um, I forgot to put this back in. But, yeah, so that is how I organize for two weeks my medications so that I don't have to go digging through. Because, it's, again, like, first of all, it's a pain to have to go digging through to find the right bottles, uh, twice a day. Because there's more stuff in that bag. Stuff that I take very infrequently, or stuff I would only take if I had an asthma flare-up. Or stuff I would only take if I had an inflammatory bowel flare-up. Or stuff I would only take if I was having a very severe migraine with nausea. Like, so there are pills in there that I don't take every day. And I just don't want to have to go digging through all of that twice a day. I find it much better to just, every two weeks, fill these, and I'm good for two weeks. And like I said, I got that double check of looking. Did, did I take it? Oh, yep, it's empty. I took it. <laughs> the triple check. Did I take it? Yep, the patch is on. I took my pills this morning. Um, if I didn't even really introduce myself, did I? I just kind of jumped into it. I think that's because I had started filming it already and then realized like I had to do something and got interrupted. So I started again, and if you haven't watched my videos before, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm Denise, as the name of my channel probably told you. And if you are someone who watches, welcome back. Uh, anyway, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I put a new video up. Probably the next video I'll be doing will be, um, I'm guessing, depending on how, how well they're doing, my, my eggplant plants. I always feel funny saying that, eggplant, plant. But what if I feel like, if I say my eggplants, you expect me to have, like, an eggplant. Like, you know, the part you eat. Um, whereas mine are still just green plants. But they're growing fabulously in the arrow gardens. I have one plant in the kitchen and two plants in the arrow garden in the upstairs hallway. So, they really are getting pretty big. They're not ready to start flowering yet. That's probably going to be another few weeks. And I'm hoping that um, our indoor temperatures have, have dropped because it's no longer hot outside. So we're to the point that we're actually having the furnace kick on at nights, going down into the 20s some nights. Uh, Fahrenheit, I'm talking. So, you know, that's below freezing. And eggplants, like other nightshades, like hot weather. So I'm hoping the fact that it's in the 60s in the house that they will, being that they're established, I'm hoping that they will continue to grow and blossom and make eggplant. The variety I have growing, you can look at my earlier videos I talked about when I first planted them, and then I showed a little progress once the plants were getting a little bigger. It's a variety called fairy tale eggplant. Some people plant it just because it's beautiful, but the, the eggplants are little two to three inch light purple eggplant. And I've never grown them before, but I've watched some videos and I was like, wow, they're, they're beautiful. And 
by all means perfectly tasty and they're small so you could just cut them up and use them in a stir fry or bake them you know along with whatever else you might be roasting in the oven uh, or you could slice them and bread them and fry them you know use them however you, however you would use an eggplant they're just small so but the plants are getting big I'm just hoping that the fact that it's getting cooler doesn't deter them this st they're still getting 16 hours a day of daylight daylight <laughs> from the grow light from the arrow garden so hopefully soon I'll be showing you uh, progress with them again I feel like just showing you green plants every week like look it's a little bigger is not very exciting so I like to wait till there's been you know some marked change that they're significantly bigger before I show them again and then hopefully like I said they'll be flowering soon Having said that, which had nothing to do with this, but I just wanted to give you an idea. If, if it's your first time watching one of my videos, I do talk about hydroponic gardening. I have, I have three separate playlists, one relating to uh, things that are basically my opinion on um, things often relating to health, disabilities, invisible illnesses, dealing with uh, disability or illness, both as the person with it or if you're the person helping or has a friend or your partner has a disability um, you know and just sort of sometimes it'll be my opinion on a random subject and that playlist is basically like my opinion um, then I do have a playlist that is unboxings and ratings of of products and then I have a playlist that is related to gardening um, most of my gardening is hydroponic or container gardening but occasionally, uh, in the summer, I do plant stuff outside in the ground. That's sort of at the discretion of my landlord, who I will be spending the winter trying to talk into, giving me a larger portion of the south-facing front yard there. Because it's the only part that really is appropriate for gardening. And it's not used for grazing horses, whereas the other sides of the house are fenced in for grazing his horses. So, uh... Yeah, wish me luck with uh, talking him into the front yard should be a pumpkin patch and garden. We'll see if I can sell that one to him over the uh, over the course of the winter. And now, I'm, after I say thank you for watching, because I always do truly appreciate that you take the time to watch. Again, like, share, subscribe, notify. Did you do it? I'm watching. I'm watching. You can do it. Just do it. Are you feeling, are you feeling like you should do it because I'm asking you to? Not so much? Well, I appreciate if you do it. So, um, anyway, have a great day, and I hope you found this informative, either for yourself or for someone who you know who might uh, find it helpful. And uh, check out my other videos. Hopefully you'll enjoy them. Have a great day.